Well, here we are. As you can see, it's arrived. It's extremely well packed. I've just taken the lid off, but that's all I've done. One power supply. Oh, nice long cable on it. Well, there we go. Look, that looks to be in perfect condition. That does look a very nice tube. Now, I'm told that that's a nickel contact at that end, but this one at this end looks as though it's gold plated, which is uh, rather good news because gold has got a, a very good catalytic reaction to get recombination working. We're just about to start changing over the old 40 watt tube that I've got in here to a 60 watt system. So, I think the first thing that we shall do is to give ourselves some working room by removing the doors so we've got access to everything now and I can disconnect my uh, ammeter here I think I won't need to change that I should just need to put that onto the new tube now before we take this tube off here what we're going to have to do is to empty the water out of it and the quickest way that I can see of doing that is to take the feed pipe from the pump like this and blow down it and that should with a bit of luck force all the water out of the system back into the tank well that's most of the water gone the next question is am I going to have enough pipe here at the moment it would appear not because I haven't got this old flow sensor on here anymore but I've got this new one then I've got more flexibility I've got more pipe that I can use so I think I'm lucky in that I shall be able to draw through well, plenty of pipe I think now before I disconnect anything else here what I should do is to just loosen off my clamps we just literally just unclip these like that and the tube will just lift out like this but at the moment it's fixed in with the high voltage and we'll disconnect the water from the high voltage end so all we've got to worry about now is disconnecting this high voltage cable now the cable the machine has been off for three or four hours now so I wouldn't expect there to be anything to worry about here on the high voltage end but I'm still going to approach it with a certain amount of caution the piece of silicon tube that I put on there will require to be cut off I think just in case I shall short it out in a minute but obviously there's nothing really powerful on there otherwise I'd have had a bite before now now if you remember I had a little spring on the end there and there is the little spring and just for good measure we'll just touch it on the frame which is earthed and it's okay so there we are that's how difficult it was to remove the tube not very at all so with the tube out we need to take the power supply out now now I'm told that this will be a direct replacement on the new power supply connection for connection well that's the power supply out nearly fortunately I have got a connector on here which allows me to disconnect it so none of that was difficult to remove so let's take a look at what we've got now and work out how we're going to fit this well that's very nice We've got a cable that's been supplied with a very nice high voltage brake connector on it. So we can connect it up. So I think the first thing we're going to have to do is to just rip this chunking off to see where our cables go. And the good news is they go in the right direction. Because those cables have got to come to the top and those cables have got to go to the bottom. Now there's only one set of connections down the bottom here to the laser which is on this uh, CN5 connection and we can see that it's to the laser because we've got 
PMW, which is uh, power width modulation. This is the drawing for this controller here. And it tells me that the PMW one, which is the red, goes to the in. There's an N and a 5 volts there. And sure enough, on here we've got an N or something and a 5 volts. And then we've got a ground next to that. And then we've got a WP and a TL and a TH. So all of this ties up nicely with this. So all we've got to do is to wire the bits and pieces together. So here we've got a little screw fixing hole at the top, which was previously, well no, it wasn't used previously to be honest. But what we've also got is this plate fixing at the bottom for holding the whole of this um, mounting plate on here. And I think that I will be able to use that for the bottom fixing and that for the top fixing. And that will probably be enough to hold the whole of the unit in okay. Let's see whether or not this does actually fit on the bottom here. No, I suppose I could captivate it on like that underneath the nut with the washer and then put a self tapper in the other side there. That's probably the best way to deal with it. Right, now that's not going to come off there. So I'm just going to get in there with an M3 or a 3mm self tapping screw. There we go, that's nice and secure in there now. It's not coming out. Actually, you know, I just realised they do unplug. Well, that's good news. So we just take a look at the drawing and we make sure we get these the right way around. Well, that wasn't too difficult, was it? Plug that in there. And we should be back in working order. Then we should slip the cover back on. The power supply in, that didn't take too much effort, did it? Well, we've just removed the plate off the end here, so that we've got access in there for the tube now. And what I'll do is put the tube in and see just how it fits. <clears throat> so this is the high voltage end, we've got a rather nice uh, water jacket on here, which covers the whole of the mirror. It's nice to see that. Um, this end here... which is the low voltage end, um, <clears throat> there's a piece of cable here, a very thin piece of wire, which was wrapped around this termination. Now, I don't know whether that's some sort of earthing for this, but I think I shall have to leave that on there because it's connected underneath the water pipe. It's nicely in the clamps because there we go. Now I want to I'd like to leave my clamp this end fairly close to this end so that when I swing it the front doesn't go too violently. If I put the clamps near the middle, then when I swing the tube I'm going to get a lot of movement at this end here. And so what I'm going to do is just I think put my clamp as far as I can along here and leave this piece here unsupported, which is not a big issue, I don't think. We'll just check whether or not we can reach that. Maybe not. In fact, there is another hole already here. So let's just have a look at that one. Go. That should solve the problem easily. Well, yeah, that's no problem at all now. And this one's the outflow end, which goes just here, which is not a problem at all either. Well, you didn't need to see me fitting my brackets, but they're now fitted. And we just think about how you want the water to come out the other end. You want the water to come out the other end towards the top. So there we are, if we set that at 45 degrees, the water should come out 
taking the bubbles out with it at the top there. OK, now, to make off the ends of my cables onto the tube has always been a bit of a problem. Up to now, the conventional way has been to sort of wrap a wire around them. And uh, I find that very unsatisfactory. I'd much rather have something that somehow has got a gentle push fit. What I'm going to do is to uh, show you a different way that I've come across. Now, I don't think this cable will strip, to be honest. I think you have to cut it off because it's got a plastic core clear plastic core that's moulded around the cable. Now there's the uh, there's the cable end and what I've got here is a crimp fastener. It's a push-on fastener with a crimp end on the back. Now the blue size are um, designed for thicker cables. This is not a particularly thick cable but what we do need to do is make sure that this um, insulated sheath fits over the outside of the cable there which it does very neatly and then we can crimp it on. Now that is really nice and secure. Well here I've got my old tube and what I'm going to do is with a screwdriver, very small bladed screwdriver, I'm going to go in here just behind the actual metal tab and I'm just going to very slightly bend the tab down inside there. Just enough so that it will slide nicely over the outside there like that and that is a nice firm fit. Okay it wobbles around a bit but by the time I put my insulating sleeve over there and fill it up with um, adhesive that's going to be what I call a nice positive fit. So that's now my preferred method for connecting to tubes and I should do the same at the low voltage end. So here's what I'm going to do to the real thing. I'm going to slip that inside there. Make the connection. I should be able to fill that up with sealant from here. And we'll put sealant all the way around there. This stuff drips all over the place so you've got to be quite quick. And then we'll screw that on. And that will give us a nice seal onto the tube. I can then put some around this end here as well. So hopefully there's no chance of any dampness or moisture getting into that area. And there we are at the, uh, at the cathode end. Um, a nice snug fit. I'm not even going to bother to put any protection on there because that's, not, that, that's basically at zero volts and there's nothing dangerous there at all. I think the only thing left to do now is to make a connection onto this return line. We'll just put a, a connector on here, a return line to the power supply. We'll just do a quick check before we do anything else. We've got our exit at the top there so that the air can get out. And we've got our connections here for the cathode. We've got water connected to it. High voltage there, and we've got water connection there. Right, we've got everything switched off here. We'll plug in some, oh, we haven't connected this, look. That would help a lot. We need to check the water outlet to make sure that the air is exiting there okay. So we'll now turn the water pump on. that's doing all right. We'll turn the laser on. Okay, well the power supply is on. Let's see what happens when we do a pulse. Nothing. Houston, we have a problem. Everything appears to be connected okay. Okay, well I think I might have found the problem. There was a, a little link in my other plug which I failed to transfer across because I didn't know what it was doing. But now I'll follow the circuit diagram. It's the water protect circuit. And now I suspect I should get a pulse. 
Let's have a retry. Power on, pump on, laser on. I think I'll turn the pulse down to 20%. Okay, let's give it a try and see what we've got. Shall we? We'll give it a little pulse. Oh, we have a pulse, look. Very nice. Yeah, it's a bit it's a bit late for me to be working out in my workshop here. It's about one o'clock in the morning, so I think we'll call that a night and we'll um we'll come back and start tidying up the machine tomorrow. Okay, <clears throat> so let's just do a quick pulse test and make sure it's alright again. Yep. Oh, that's a nice smoke ring. And it certainly has made a nice little mark on the end there, look. Wow, that's good. That's 20%. So we've got some power there. So we're going to run the 70% test again. And you're going to see it live. Make sure it's in focus because the last thing I'd want you to do is to. In fact, on this occasion, it's gone up to 73 and a half. Now it's starting to drop back. What can I say? I think I've spent my money wisely. These are an A1 company to deal with. They've done nothing but be honest with me. Their packaging was good. It was an easy install and the performance is unbelievable. I didn't buy a 70 watt tube. I mean, I'm actually scratching my head with wonderment here. <laughs> I'm lost for words. So we'll wrap this session up here and the next session will be all about setting up the mirrors and the beam path in a nice, simple, logical way that everybody can understand. Well, I still look at this graph with wonderment. How many of us have been so disappointed by over-specification and under-performance of Chinese equipment? I would say probably 90 or 95 percent of us. Now this is the exception to the rule. They have far exceeded the specification that they promised me. Everything about them has been professional and high quality and the results are here to be seen. Now I think that quite a few of you guys will want to follow my path when you upgrade your machine. So I'd suggest you pause your video and take a look down the right hand side at the information panel that I've given you there. Now I spent a lot of time trying to track down a potentially good product at a reasonable price. This particular company are growing, they want to produce a high quality product and they've certainly done that. So my final words are, well done Mactron, you've exceeded my expectations by at least a thousand percent.